Jammy wagon wheels or original wagon wheels? Which are better? It's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. Here we go with chapter two. Woo! Fractions, the one that everybody has been waiting for. We're starting this off with a recap from previous years, looking at simplifying fractions and equivalent fractions. So we're going to start off with these shapes. And if we take this one up here, what fraction of the shape has been shaded, Ellie? One third. Perfect. One third has been shaded blue. You've got one bit blue and there are three parts in total. What fraction has been shaded with this one? Zach. Brilliant. Two sixths. There's two parts shaded out of six. And with this one here, what fraction has been shaded? Sophie. Brilliant. Four twelfths. What do you notice about the fraction that's been shaded blue in each shape? Perfect. You can see that dun 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 dun, dun all the fractions are equal. If you look at this picture here where this has been shaded blue, this diagram here where this has been shaded blue, and this diagram here where this has been shaded blue, you can see it's the exact same amount. Which means that one third is the same as two sixths, which is the same as the four twelfths. Let's take these top two, let's take the one third and the two sixths. Well, because they are the exact same, you can change between them. So to change from the one third to two sixths, the way you do that is you multiply both the numerator and the denominator. The numerator starts with N, like north, that's the number at the top. Denominator starts with D for down, that's the number at the bottom. So the numerator and denominator, the top and the bottom, have both been multiplied by two. So one times two gives you two, three times two gives you six. So we have this fraction that is the same. And because it's the same, it's known as an equivalent fraction. If we are given a fraction, we can create an equivalent fraction by multiplying both the numerator and denominator, top and bottom of the fraction, by the same number. Let's try that with an example. So example one, write down a fraction equivalent to one half. Now to do this lean, what you need to do is think of a number that we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by. You can pick any number you like, pick a whole number. What number are you going for lean? Four. Okay, so we want to multiply the top by four and the bottom by four. That is what lean chose. You can choose any number you like. If you do the one times four, you get four. If you do two times four, you get eight. And you know that four out of eight is the exact same as a half. So that is an equivalent fraction. So really all you want to do is you multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number, any number. Go with the whole number though. If you've got one half, let's pick another number. What, uh, this time, Tyler. Good, so you're going for seven, so let's multiply the top by seven and the bottom by seven. So one times seven gives you seven, and two times seven gives you 14. Again, if you've got seven out of 14 as a, in a test, you know that is the same as one half. So you know these fractions are the same, they are equal. You've created an equivalent fraction. Equivalent fraction. Let's go with another one. Again, pick a number to multiply both the numerator and denominator by Morgan. What are you going for? 23. Okay, so we're multiplying the top by 23 and the bottom by 23. 1 times 23 is 23. 2 times 23? 46. Good. So you end up with 23 over 46. And again, that's the exact same as 1 half. Let's try another one then. Example 2. Write down a fraction equivalent to 5 eighths. And again, what you want to do is multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number. Tia, pairs with a number. So 5 eighths, what are we multiplying the numerator and denominator by? 3. So we're multiplying the top by three and the bottom by three. Again, Tia chose three. You can pick any number you like. Five times three gives you? Good. And eight times three gives you? Perfect. So you end up with 15 over 24. That is a fraction that's the same as the five eighths. It's an equivalent fraction. Let's try another one. So five eighths, pick any number you like to multiply the numerator and denominator by. Louise, what are you going for? None. Okay, so we're multiplying the top by nine and the bottom by nine as well. So five times nine is 45 and eight times nine is 72. Thank you, Louise. So you end up with 45 over 72 and that fraction is the same as the five 
eighths. Brilliant. Let's try one more. So five eighths, we want an equivalent fraction. So we want to multiply the top and the bottom by a number, any number at all. Uh, what are you going to choose this time? Are we going to go for? So Hannah, 34. Okay, so we're multiplying the top by 34 and the bottom by 34. Thank you, so Hannah. So, 5 times 34 gives you 170. And if you do 8 times 34, that gives you... 272. Brilliant. Well done, 272. So that fraction there, 170 over 272, would be the same as 5 eighths. Woo! So, you can see with each of these, what we're doing is we're multiplying up the way the numbers are becoming bigger to create an equivalent fraction. A lot of the time, though, what we want to do is we want to make the numbers smaller. We want to make them simpler. So we can reverse that and go the opposite way. So instead, say we started with the 2 6. Because we know that's the same as 1 3rd, we probably want to write it as 1 3rd. We want to write it as simply as possible. So to change from the 2 6 to the 1 3rd, what you can do is instead of multiplying the top and the bottom by the same number, you want to divide them both by the same number. But what you have to do is you need to look for a number they both divide by. So with 2 and 6, they are both in the 2 times tables. You can divide them both by 2. Make sure when you divide them, you end up with whole numbers for the numerator and denominator. Don't mix your decimals with fractions together. So, with 2 and 6, they both divide by 2, so if you divide them both by 2, you would end up with 1 and 3. So really, what you're doing is you're making the numbers smaller. You're making the fraction simpler. So to simplify a fraction, divide the top and the bottom, or numerator and denominator, by the same number. Let's try an example then. So example 3, simplify the following fraction fully. So we've got 12 fifteenths. We know what we want to do is we divide the numerator and denominator. Remember, numerator N for north, that's at the top. Denominator D for down, that's at the bottom. Divide the numerator and denominator by the same number. So we need to think 12 and 15, what do they both divide by? Can anybody see a number they both divide by? Just shout it out. Three. Perfect. So you can divide the top by three and the bottom by three. So 12 divided by three gives you four. Good. And 15 divided by three? Five. Perfect. So we've got the four fifths. And we know because we're dividing them both by the same number, well, that four fifths is the same as the twelve fifteenths. So that is our simplified fraction. Once you get an answer, though, we've got the four fifths, just check you can't divide them both by the same thing apart from one. You wouldn't bother dividing them by one, because if you divide them both by one, you would still end up with four fifths. You're not changing the fraction, you're not making it simpler, you're just keeping it the same. So it's pointless. So look for any number that you can divide them by apart from one. So four and five don't divide by anything apart from one. Next one, example four, simplify the following fraction fully. So we've got 21 over 56. Once again, we're thinking, what can you divide both of those numbers by? So with 21 and 56, think about what times table they are both in. Seven! Perfect. You can divide them both by seven. If you divide 21 by seven, you get good. And if you divide 56 by seven, you get even better. Well done. So you get three eighths. Woo! That is our simplified fraction. Always check, can you simplify that any further? No, you can't. You can't divide 3 and 8 by the same number apart from 1. Next one. Example 5, simplify the following fraction fully. We've got 24 over 32. Again, think about what number you can divide them both by. There's a few different ways to do this, so if you're unsure about this first way, have a look at the second method. So the first method, what quite a few people might realise, is that, ooh, I'm dividing by the same number, and they both divide by 8. So you can divide the top by 8, and you can divide the bottom by 8. So 24 divided by 8 will give you 3, good. And 32 divided by 8 gives you... Four. Perfect. So you end up with three quarters. So what you've done is you've simplified the fraction fully straight away. What other people might like doing though instead is thinking, mm, I can't divide by eight. I like small numbers. So you might want to divide by something smaller. For example, you may wish to divide by two because you're thinking, mm, 24 divides by two and mm, 32 divides by two. So if you divide them both by two, you end up with 12 sixteenths. 
However, once you get 12 sixteenths, you need to think, can you divide that again? Can you divide them by the same number? Well, again, because they're both even numbers, you can divide them again by 2. So you can divide the 12 by 2, and you can divide the 16 by 2. Dividing them both by 2 would give you... Good, 6 over 8, fantastic. Again, once you've got 6 over 8, you need to think, can you simplify that any further? So can you think of any number that you can divide 6 and 8 by that wouldn't leave a remainder? 2, good. Well done, so you can divide the 6 by 2 and you can divide the 8 by 2. So dividing them both by 2 will give you an answer of, Laura, perfect 3 quarters. So that's just another method of doing that. There are other ways as well. What you could always do is you could divide the 24 and the 32 by 4. If you divide them both by 4, you're missing this step out. And you're dividing by 4 to get the 6 over 8. And then once again, you can divide them both by 2. Or you could divide them both by 2, first of all, to get the 12 over 16. And then what you could do is you could divide by 4. So divide them both by 4 and you get the 3 over 4. Either way, the 3 over 4 is the same answer no matter which way you are doing it. 24 over 32 is the same as 3 quarters. Just make sure that you always simplify your fraction fully, which is why it's saying fully for each of these questions. Give these questions a shot looking at creating equivalent fractions on page 125 in the TJ Nat 4 book, book 1. Uh, on page 125 is looking at equivalent fractions on question 6 and then just going over the page to question 8 that's looking at simplifying fractions. Just check you're okay with both of these before you move on. Did you enjoy that? Me too. Woo! See ya!